In this video, we discuss hiatus hernia. This is the most common positional abnormality. Usually, the herniated organ is the abdominal segment of the esophagus with part of the stomach. Although greater omentum, colon, spleen, pancreas, and small intestine are sometimes involved. The prevalence of hiatal hernia increases with age. Weakening of the phrenoesophageal membrane allows superior displacement of the GOJ. The diaphragmatic hiatus is normally a muscular, slit-like opening in the right cruise of the diaphragm passing anterior to posterior. In a well-established sliding hiatal hernia, it becomes more circular, with atrophy of the surrounding muscular fibers. This change in configuration explains the main clinical consequence of sliding hiatal hernias. Most hiatal hernias are small, involving a protrusion of a part of the gastric fundus at least 1.5 to 2 cm above the diaphragm. At the opposite extreme, the entire stomach may be intrathoracic. Hiatal hernias may be divided into four types. Sliding hiatal hernias, type 1. Parasophageal hernias, type 2. Mixed hiatal hernia, type 3. Hiatal hernia and intrathoracic stomach and organoaxial rotation, type 4. Sliding hiatal hernias are the most common type, approximately 90%, and this is type 1. The gastroesophageal junction slides proximally through the diaphragmatic hiatus and becomes an intrathoracic location. Small or moderate-sized hiatal hernias are often reducible, changing in size and configuration during barium evaluation, and are best demonstrated with the patient recumbent in the right anterior oblique position. Type 1 is often accompanied by gastroesophageal reflux and reflux esophagitis. The diagnosis of a sliding hiatal hernia is made on fluoroscopy when gastric rugae are seen traversing the diaphragm, or when the esophageal B ring, representing the squamocolumnar junction, is seen above the diaphragm. Assessment of small, less than 2 cm, sliding hiatal hernias is rather inaccurate and in the past has led to overdiagnosis. High resolution manometry, although imperfect, is the current gold standard. CT, endoscopy. Fluoroscopy is sufficient for diagnosing large sliding hiatal hernias. Parasophageal hernias or type 2. The gastroesophageal junction is in its normal position below the diaphragm. The proximal stomach or gastric fundus herniates through the esophageal hiatus. It is caused by a focal defect in the phrenoesophageal membrane rather than generalized laxity. Usually to the left of the distal esophagus in the posterior mediastinum. It is more prone to incarceration and obstruction than a sliding hernia. In this context the chief concern is for progression to gastric volvulus, with its concomitant risks of obstruction and infarction. As with sliding hiatal hernias, symptoms of gastroesophageal reflux may be present. Rolling hiatal hernias are most easily diagnosed fluoroscopically or with CT. Mixed hiatal hernia, type 3. A combination of both types 1 and 2 together. The gastroesophageal junction above the hiatus. Type 4 hiatal hernia is composed of an intrathoracic stomach, which may demonstrate organoaxial rotation. Traumatic diaphragmatic hernias result from a tear in the diaphragm either from a direct penetrating injury or from a sudden increase in intra-abdominal pressure during blunt trauma. These hernias are almost always on the left side. Herniation may occur immediately after trauma or may be delayed by many years. Diagnosis is often difficult both due to lack of specificity of symptoms and it is often confused with simple elevation of the hemidiaphragm. On barium studies the recognition of the gastric hernia lateral to the normal esophageal hiatus is crucial. CT is helpful in confirming the diagnosis. If you like the video, you can like it, comment it, and share it with your friends. If you are not subscribed yet, please subscribe and click the bell button.